Hello, I'm Lee from Data Harvest, and in this video, we're going to show you how the wireless rotary motion sensor works. So we, you can purchase the wireless uh, rotary motion sensor and the, also the accessory kit. We recommend you buy the accessory kit because it will also give you the pendulum here with the masses and the discs so you can do things like the conservation of angular momentum. Uh, that's also another video that you can uh, watch as well. So all our wireless sensors <coughs> have USB and Bluetooth. Uh, they, so USB will work on Windows machines, Apple, Mac and Chromebooks, as well as Bluetooth. And Bluetooth will work on Android and iOS devices as well. So to turn the, and it, the rotary motion sensor on, I hold it down for two seconds and it should now be flashing. So it's now flashing blue, which means it's broadcasting Bluetooth. So you go to the EasySense 2 software. It will only pick up data harvest uh, Bluetooth sensors. So you can now click connect. Now there's lots of ranges you can do on here. And there's also the other video that I just mentioned for the angular momentum is going to be used with RAVs, or you can use RADs actually, but either. I'm going to leave it on pendulum as we've got on here. Now I'm going to go to graph. Now you can straight away just start to swing this, click start. There you go, I'm going to do click on it. And you can see that and it's going to run and continue to auto scale and carry on running. So let that go. Now this is good, if you want dampening, you can just leave this now. Uh, you can also obviously add materials on there as well and it will go lower and lower over the space of a few minutes, maybe up to five minutes. So that's one experiment you can do very easily. Now if I click stop and click start again, you can do as many of those as you like. But what we're going to do on here, I want to do three readings, one at that angle, that angle and a lower angle to show that the duration of the swing is the same. So for that to work, I do need to tell it to start at the same point each time. So I'm gonna tell it to start when it rises above zero, don't need a trigger point, but I do just want to go for a duration. And I think for this, we will just go for about five seconds is absolutely plenty. But I do want a higher sample rate than that. So instead of having 50 milliseconds, let's go to about 20 milliseconds. So there you go, so 20 milliseconds will be absolutely fine. So we now click stop. I'm gonna go and click start and that'll be our first one. So we've now got the information on there, which is brilliant. I can now click overlay down the bottom. Now when I click overlay, that's now on permanently. So I can now increase, or let's do a smaller one first, there we go. And click the start button again. So you see it's going to exactly the same place. So the period of the swing is the same. And we'll do one last one on here of a higher one on there. Just to, there you go, emphasize that point one last time. So that's one nice easy experiment for pendulum, but a very common one as well. I'm just gonna to go to new lab and just reset it. Is if I will just click start now Collect some data for a certain, I won't wait 10 seconds, you can stop it whenever you want and it auto scales, there you go, oops, <laughs> so it stopped it and auto scaled that on there. But what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to now derive and get the velocity uh, data and then get the acceleration data from the velocity data. So you can go to calculate at the top, let's just stop that swinging. Add a series, so I'm going to call this uh, velocity to start off with. Unit is M stroke S, the formula I need is dx divided by dt. So that's from there, that's absolutely fine. And there you go, that's the data there. Now, that rotary motion is not quite as smooth, uh, the swing on the pendulum is not quite as smooth as you think. So I'm just going to slightly smooth that data, there you go. Go to calculate again, and I'm now gonna derive the acceleration data from my velocity data. So this one is m stroke s stroke s. Again, same formula, dx divided by dt. So we've got that here, but this time we want to go from the velocity line. So we can now save that. Oh, there you go. And we can smooth that one as well slightly. There you go, so we've got some lovely data there. We can now go to tools, go to values, and we can show 
we have the opposite from the existing data to the acceleration, which is exactly what it should be. There's lots more videos on our website at data-harvest.co.uk. They are on the drop-down menu teaching. And if you go to the secondary academy, there's lots of videos there split into three sections. The first section, how the Bluetooth sensors work. Second section of how you can use them with experiments. And the third section is uh, how the EasySense 2 software works. Any support you need, please contact us here at Data Harvest. There's lots of worksheets on all the product pages as well, but contact us at sales at data-harvest.co.uk. Thank you.